big ideas, big innovations, well, that describes the pickup truck industry. Each year, brands compete against the next to debut the latest innovations, and thankfully, we're reaping those rewards. Hey, welcome to this edition of Road Warrior. I'm your host, Grant Robertson. Now, the pickup industry is far from whence it began many decades ago, delivering premium qualities, innovations, and safety and conveniences. The biggest leader in that pact is from GMC, specifically this being the 2023 GMC Sierra 1500 Denali version in ultimate package. That basically means it delivers all the frills inside and the robustness that you expect on the outside. For 2023, the Sierra continues its overall tight body lines, seen most notably there with the front haunches that look sawed off. A little bit of flare here as you sweep to the back, but overall trimming the fat on this Sierra. As for the body lines, pretty much smooth all the way across, no transforming up this vehicle with too much chiseling up, but there is a nice ridge right through here, representing the midline and dimpling in right through the front doors. As for protecting this overall sleek exterior, that's going to be seen in this rubber cladding around the four corners, but thankfully it doesn't sweep down the lower third. That means it looks less bulky, less cladding, and premium-esque, which is represented also by the Denali name. One thing I've seen across the automotive industry really is this smoking, darkened exterior facades really seen in the grill warfare and the four corners. But on a Denali, what you expect is chrome, and you certainly see it around the windows here on the side mirrors, but the grill really typically stands out, blinged out, almost blinding effect when it comes to all the chrome. But this one has more of an aggressive front end, kind of a dual tone effect. You'll see it represented in the GMC, little touches of chrome here and there. Now at the bottom, blinged out chrome, but I like this kind of smoky front. That also nice and couples well with the exterior facade because when you have a darkened exterior, darkened front accents, really kind of gives that menacing, kind of aggressive overall appeal. Now, if you do go with a lighter color, those contrast accents really will stand out. Also going on well up here is the headlight assembly. Across the truck industry, you're seeing a lot of attention to headlights. What I like here is it's a modest approach. Some of the um, competition really going with a full stack and that really becomes a blinding affair for people coming its way. Thankfully, this is more subdued approach. Again, blending in nicely with the overall look. Dual headlights up here for bright and of course standard, sweeping down the fog lights tucked down low. As for airflow, you're gonna see plenty of gobbling up through here, even this little niche as well. As it sweeps down, this little nice niche really sweeps the air down the side. Now let's look at some safety features at the front and that's around this vehicle. When it comes to overall size, the Sierra certainly has stage presence, meaning it's a big bad boy on the road, but you don't have to have a commercial license to get behind the wheel. That means it could be kind of a white knuckling affair for any novice, but advancements in the truck industry basically help scale this vehicle down in overall feel when you're behind the wheel. And where it begins is in the cameras all the way around this vehicle. You can say it's almost like a surveillance team giving you eyes all the way around. That means in tight spots, it feels so much smaller. Also helping it feel so much smaller is this right here. Now this is nothing new. A lot of mirrors break away for convenience, but this one of course is powered. It is Denali. That gives you a visual that this vehicle is locked as well as minimizes scratch, dings, and break away. Now as for convenience climbing inside, well to be expected, smart key system, keep it in your pocket, um, access buttons on the front doors. I've argued this a lot. If you can have them on the front, please put them back here. But either way, it's a one button press to unlock everything with ease. The mirrors swing out, welcome you to the vehicle. Now for me, six foot two, it's real easy to climb inside. The Sierra doesn't really have a lot of stance that's too overdone. But for anyone that's shorter, maybe small kids, one thing that's going to help on this Denali is the pneumatic swing out step rails. That really allows for anyone to step there and climb inside. But if you're tall like me and use that, well, you're probably going to be a head banging affair right through here. So I say just turn around, slide her in. So just how big is this vehicle? Overall measuring about 231 inches, wheelbase fairly substantial at 147. As for width, about 82 inches wide and 75 inches tall. Lastly, which is important on any, well, vehicle that has four wheel drive is ground clearance around about eight inches. With the advancement seen in the premium luxury across the truck industry, really represented on the inside of the Denali Ultimate, what that means is once you climb inside, you'll pretty much forget all about the workability and getting the job done on this vehicle. Instead, find the relaxation. That is until you get to the job site, get out and sweep around to the 
business end of things, but thankfully the convenience is found back here are going to make it a lot less backbending affair and a lot simpler. Where it starts, of course, is in the backup camera scene up top and at the back. That means when you're getting into the tight spots, your uh, work to be done is going to be found here instead of, well, back and forth. That again makes it so much simpler. Also making it simpler is in the tailgate design. First off in kind of the dual split uh, zone. Really seeing the upper button here, press that. This is gonna lay down with ease. This is gonna make it so items that are long are gonna have less of a angled approach and a little bit flatter. That's just gonna give you a whole bunch of different combinations and utilizes in this back area. Also helping is when you press down this, first off, you're gonna notice a nice ease down approach. This right here is gonna be just standard practice, a big tailgate and just difficulty reaching in. But helping with that a little bit better is again, flipping down this upper portion. That is going to do one of two things. First off, it's going to allow you to get closer to your items and again, barely grab them and pull them out. But also that means when you press this button here, that's going to give you a nice step to climb inside because after all, once you're back here to get up in this area has always been a difficult approach. You can see those niches on the side. That really is going to help as well. If you don't want to flip this down, maybe there's items here, but when appropriate, this allows you to have a step and for safety, you just simply grab right there and that's going to help you have a handlebar, grab up and safely climb inside. With the premium quality seat on the inside, you could argue this vehicle isn't all about work. It also is about play, and you certainly see it here at the back end. First off, when this uh, rear tailgate is set up like this, it just makes for a nice hangout area or tailgate party. What also helps with that is some entertainment, and you'll find in the form of two speakers and power controls, as well as USB connection, aux cord, and Bluetooth capabilities. Now, I did try to test this out and had some connectivity issues, both in the old traditional and Bluetoothing. Didn't give it a lot of time to really work out the kinks, but I'll leave that to you. But it does add some nice entertainment here at the back end. To be expected, this tailgate has a little bit of weight to it, and that's because of all the operation. So it takes a little bit of extra oomph to get it up and fold it back in. Where you'll see it first is in this rear step. That's just gonna take a little bit to slam it in, and you'll simply pull this up, keeping your hand here to keep the tailgate down. Pull it up like that. Now, one thing you'll notice is when you get it here, you may just wanna kinda of ease your shoulder into it and close it up. That makes it less about the arm strength and more just about angling up. And I find it a lot simpler and feeling a lot lighter. This particular model is the Crew Cab Edition, but arguably it's less about the crew and more about the family outings because this vehicle looks so much better on the beaten path versus sticky situations, but you know it can get the job done and all the above, so it can definitely handle anything. What I like with this size Crew Cab is, well, there's no bad seat in the house and it starts with legroom numbers. Around about 44 inches in the front, that means six foot two inches is handled with ease or above. Back here, minor difference around about 43 inches so again if you're a little bit kind of nervous there behind the wheel we'll pony up somewhere else as for uh, seating position overall comfort what you're going to find is bench styling kind of a 70 30 split individualized on the outer side plenty of room for three people and you do have a nice elbow support in the form of dual cup holders and a padded area but as for overall comfort Little niches here, but never going to be a knee banging affair. Just never getting there. So plenty of comfort, great overall um, seating position and even better headroom with this cathedral like niche kind of adds some extra arching. So you never feel cramped back here. Now, one thing to note, of course, with the back of the truck here, well, you're never going to be able to recline, but with a little bit of extra knee room, you can squinch down just a hair. You won't find tri-zone systems on most trucks, but you will find these perfectly placed rear vents on the back of the center console in the front and you'll find nice heated options there for the outer occupants and the controls there as well. The big story in this vehicle is about the best seat in the house and it has to be the pilot's position and again, the driver centric approach. Now we've seen this on other General Motors models, so it must be a theme across the board and you see it here on the Sierra Denali Ultimate, really with huge LCD display angled just a hair towards the driver, as well as the digital readout, the LCD display for the gauge cluster. This makes for a cleaner look and we did see on the competition more of a vertical approach in this area. I like this because I tend to want let look left and right versus up and down. This just fits my eye so much better. Also fitting my eye is the heads up display. That's giving you tons of information that really minimizes you having to look down here at all, giving you the current speed of where you're at, the navigation if you have it running, and of course the digital rail for speed. Now it's diving a little bit closer at some other features. 
Now, before we dive in there, let's look at a feature I found in the center console that was traditionally found there in the back. What I'm referring to is a traditional household outlet on my own Yukon XL. That was on the back of the center console and kind of inconvenient for the driver or front passenger. But in for the Sierra, it's been located up here in the center console. In this case, we need to actually charge up for this production. So plugged in my device quite easily. Now that may be kind of an arguing point there for the back seat passengers, but for the driver, it's all about convenience. Some other connectivity to look at is in the form of two USBs right here and a wireless charging pad. That's typically going to be found in a niche once the center console is closed. One thing to note, I typically have a case on my phone, but unfortunately that didn't allow for it to charge up wirelessly. So I had to take it off, then slide it in. That means I get a nice little green indicator right over here versus an X. That means it's not working. One thing you'll notice besides the oversizing of this infotainment cluster is the split screen. Over here on the right side, nice quick shortcuts, whether it be when you connect to your trailer. I did notice also when you're uh, navigating, it will give you a nice navigation screen like you're seeing here. Over on the left is your various shortcuts like audio maps, and you do have other uh, shortcuts as well. If you get lost, you can simply press the home button over here or down below that'll get you back to the main menu settings what i do like is the maps once you click on that it's going to go full screen and this is a google driven map that's similar to the ones you're going to use like on your apple phone or whatever versus kind of the old school gps like i have on my own yukon xl this is a lot more robust and specifically when you're searching it out it'll navigate you of course but also give you real-time information like your phone does basically wanting you to reroute if there's traffic. It gives you indicators of, of course, when there's traffic build up and is just up to date versus the antiquated GPSs, which I hope goes away. And this is more readily used. I mentioned earlier about the surveillance light cameras on this vehicle, and we've seen it across the board on lots of vehicles, but I like on this truck how big it is and how helpful this is gonna be. On the left side, it's giving you kind of that bird's eye view. It really blows my mind of just how that works, but obviously surround cameras allow you to kind of look down into those tight spots, scrapes and dings. This of course is the front camera. As you put in reverse, changes cameras and you have a multitude of options, even looking right down the left or right side of the vehicle and looking right down the front. The best thing about these camera options is they're getting more high definition qualities and work really well during the day, of course, and at night. For starting the vehicle, you'll find this oversized press start button right here. For switching gears, not going to be in a typical form, but rather a push up and down gear selector. Release here on the left, just push up for reverse, pull down for drive, and press here for park. Now that does for this edition of Warrior and our test drive behind the wheel of the 2023 GMC Sierra 1500 Denali ultimate edition all that said basically means it has that premium qualities you would expect with denali well the ultimate taking it even more to the next level now i do like the grill warfare how it's toned down just a hair doesn't have all that blinged out quality but certainly as you sweep down the side the chrome accents still stand out the dressing up of this vehicle really reminded you that well gmc does it well when delivering premium but lastly, well, it's still a truck. It still gets the job done. And of course, with the versatility here at the back, ease of access for this vehicle is all the way around. Now, as always, like thank you for watching this edition of Road Warrior. Keep both hands on the wheel and eyes straight ahead.